years ago when the Baptist began to cut sermon series to just one. It's not. <laughs> this week is keeping Jesus in the middle of your blessing. Keeping Jesus in the middle of your blessing. I came here today to tell you that regardless of where you are in life, regardless of the station in life, regardless of where you're at, whether you're the youngest person in the room or the oldest person in the room, God still has a plan for you. God still has a job for you. God still has something for us to do. And that's something to, that needs to be done is, is blessing. Now, we think a blessing is something that God does for us, right? We think, you know, well, when I get up in the morning, I pray that God will do this and God will do that. God bless me with good health and God bless me with this and that. Or whatever. But is that really the total picture of blessing? Oh, by the way, I want to thank Beth for bringing the message last week. Beth, I, I, I told you this morning, I heard it, and you did a good job. But I want to say thank you in front of everybody, and I appreciate what you did. But getting back to blessing, blessing is a, it's a Greek word. It's called ilageo. Ilageo. You know, say that? Ilageo. And what it simply means is that we speak good or positive words over something. Now, God does this to us. Right? We recognize when God does something in our lives that it, it blesses us. We recognize God's blessing in our life. But do you know that there's three different types of blessing in the New Testament? There's the blessing where God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit blesses humans. Okay? That's what God, you know, gives, uh, gives Lucille a new car after she messed her up. That's a, that was a blessing, wasn't it? That's God blessing us. Then there's humans blessing God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. But y'all didn't know that, did you? When we praise God, that is our way of blessing God, blessing Jesus, blessing the Holy Spirit. And then there's humans blessing humans. Now, there's 44 different times in the New Testament that that word, Elageo, is mentioned. 44 times. 17 times it's God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit blessing humans. 13 times is humans blessing God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And 14 times is humans blessing humans. Is this thing going on? No, I think it's good. No, I think it's good. It's okay, okay. But uh, when we look at this, we, 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 we've got to understand that when we emulate Jesus, when we're walking with Jesus, our, our, our lives should be becoming more and more like Him each day. Okay, when we emulate Jesus, we should be blessing, not only blessing the Father, blessing the Son, blessing the Holy Spirit, but we should be blessing each other. We should be calling down blessings upon, now you can't bestow a blessing on somebody unless it comes from God. Okay, I can say, Travis, the Lord bless you, my brother. I appreciate the job you did yesterday, getting up early and coming helping me make breakfast for 14 minutes. May God bless you for that. You understand what I'm saying? I'm calling God's name down to bless Travis. The Holy Spirit, may the Holy Spirit refresh you from the sleepy bits. You understand what I'm saying? We bless God by praise and adoration, by glorifying Him. We praise, we bless others, not by praising them, but by asking God's blessing upon their life. One of the things that I've, done, I've always done since I became a pastor is marriage counseling. Pre-marriage counseling and counseling for married couples while they're, you know, while they're still married. And one of the things that I've always insisted on is that they pray for each other. And I do this from the first time I meet them to the, to the last session is I require them, right? Well, I ask them. They may not do it. But in the evening before they go to bed, or if they're dating, you know, at the end of the day, is to lay, for the man to lay his hands upon the woman and pray for her. Not pray for this and pray for that and pray for all the things, you know, the dog and the cat, you know, everything that's involved. But just pray for her. 
and to call down blessings upon her life to be a godly woman, to be a woman of God's favor. And then she turns around and does the same thing for him. Now, guys, I don't know about you, but it's hard to be angry with somebody that you're praying for a blessing on their life. I, I'm going to get in trouble with saying this, but that's okay. I don't even understand. Several years ago, we when we were over education and training at Matthew's Church, we, we would go over there on Tuesdays and we would pray for, for the teachers and for the students and for, for the entire education program of the church. And there's no telling what I said or did. I mean, and you know how men are. They, they say stupid stuff. And women Amen. get mad. And, yeah. But anyway, she was a little perturbed. She, well, let's face it, she was bad. And we, we, we came into church and we got down on our knees at the altar. And there was, I think there was four of us there. And she was right beside me. And I could hear her pray. She said, God, if he's the devil, go ahead and kill him now. But if he's not, straighten him out. <laughs> And believe it or not, that is really a blessing on my life because she recognized that there was no, uh, you know, potentially I could be better than what I was. But we pray, not just for ourselves, but for others. I pray for all of y'all. I pray for all of y'all. I call you by name. But you know something that I haven't been doing that I've been severely convicted of? And I, I've done it a couple of times, but I need to pray for each one of you individually and bless you. But you should also be blessing each other. But you can't do that if, if you're mad or, or, or you're upset with me. You can't do that if your heart is deflected or, or, or over here away from really loving somebody. You can't call down a blessing from God if, if you're not right with God. You can't pray for that blessing. And sometimes we get into a situation where you know, we just don't recognize that. But there blessings is mentioned all throughout the Bible. In fact, it, it's mentioned in Genesis. Genesis 2 says, and then God blessed the seventh day and sanctioned it and made it holy. Man in Mark 10, 16, he says, and he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Talking about the little children. Now, I'm sure that, that, that the people that were there, the adults that witnessed that, thought, oh, ain't that sweet? Ain't that sweet? He laid his hands on, 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 on the kids, and, and he blessed them. Oh, ain't that sweet? But do you know the spiritual impact that that made? We, we may never know until we get to heaven. But to those kids, he instilled in them some spiritual gift by the laying on of hands. He spoke to them as their creator and blessed them. Put his name on their life. And I think as children of God, as followers of Christ, we should be doing the same thing. When we, when we are blessing people, we are actually connecting that blessing to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are asking in their name that that person be blessed. We all know the last thing Jesus did before he went back to heaven. Y'all remember what he did? Or what he said? Is in Matthew 28. I, I, I say this all the time. Go to all the world preaching though and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have made. And lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. But what was the last thing that Jesus did? It's found in Luke 24. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed them. And in the process of him blessing them, he was lifted up into heaven while he was still blessing them. The last thing Jesus did before he went back to heaven was to bless his disciples. They were in for a fight. They were in for a trial. They were in for being without him. 
and he blessed them as he was carried up into heaven. But we're, we're also supposed to bless you. Uh, in Psalms 134, uh, 2, it says, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. You know, back when Methodism first came to this country, uh, they were, people lifted their hands. People stood, they lifted their hands, they stood up and cried, they stood up and shouted, they stood up and gave glory to God. The Bible says it. To lift up your head. Oh, wait a minute. What is maybe that's maybe that's a little too Pentecostal for me. A little too, a little too charismatic. But, but there's more. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, Psalms one third, one thirty. Well, I've got that. But First uh, Timothy two eight said, "I desire that in every place men should pray, lifting up holy hands before God." It's okay. Every now and then I'll see hands go up around here. I get excited. Because you know what? When we're doing what the Bible says, we're communing with God. We're, we're recognizing and we're blessing Him by lifting up our hands. We're giving glory to Him by lifting up our hands. First John, we know that, that we have passed out of death <coughs> unto life because we love the brother. We, He who does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer will ever have eternal life. Psalms 28 says, Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift my hands toward the Most High in the sanctuary. Sometimes I wonder. And this is the thing that's going on in the church today. Is people have started wanting their own way. People have started deciding that my way is better than God's way. We, we don't think about what God would have us do. What God would, is leading us to do. And then we get upset or we get mad because somebody else doesn't agree with us. And it, it goes on. In the last three months, I, I know of three churches that have split. Three churches. I was talking about talking to somebody at the, at the breakfast yesterday, and he was talking about how, how two men in their 80s almost got into a fist fight over something stupid. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, we're called by Jesus at the last supper to love each other the way he loved us. How do we do that when we're throwing up roadblocks, when we're throwing fits, when we're saying things that hurt people, when we're saying things that are just disagreeable? I know there's sometimes, I'm going to get in trouble again, that uh, I'm at home and I'm not, I'm not very good. I want to be left alone. And those days seem like they're the days where Tony and Rebecca want to talk to the brothers. And sometimes I, I, you know, I don't. I try not to be rude. Craig's laughing like he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but you know, I don't. I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. But every man in here knows that sometime in life that his wife says something to him, and he knows better than to say it. But he's going to say it anyway. <laughs> he, does that. he knew better he knew what the result was going to be but he said it anyway sometimes we need to think well, you know, I, and I know it's kind of cliche because we had these, these uh, jelly uh, bands on our wrists for what would Jesus do but what would Jesus do Instead of instead of making a slide remark or, or snapping back or, or, or worse yet getting into an argument, what would Jesus do? I think the Bible tells us Paul said, you know, hey, it's it's better to feel slighted and not cause a problem than to try to get our own way. Some ready to quit laughing. You're you're giving the wrong impression here. <laughs> 
Yeah, so I'm sitting up there about ready to limp. <laughs> <laughs> but but really, guys, in all honesty, instead of instead of saying what you want to say or what you don't want to say, you say it anyway. How about saying it less? I've got a friend. He's uh, he's Jewish. He, he's actually a Messianic Jew, and each each week, each Saturday, they have what's called a Shabbat, and a Shabbat is is a celebration. It's, it's a celebration, and it, it's amazing the things that come out in the show. And the first time I ever got invited to one, I went, I went and, I, and I, of course, I'm not Jewish, but I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. You know why? Because Jesus was a Jew, and I'm a big fan of the Jewish people. But I, but I learned so much, and part of the Shabbat is that the husband takes the time to bless them. And the kids see their daddy put his hands on the mother and pray a blessing upon her. And with all the, the fussing and the fighting that goes on in, in this world, isn't it nice to begin to see a blessing being prayed upon somebody? And then he prays over the kids. And somehow, some you know, I, I suggested that mom and, and the kids pray over him. He said, that's not part of the Shabbat. <laughs> but then he said, but I pray over her every Saturday, every Saturday. I pray over the children every Saturday. I love that. And I got to thinking, I've got, I've got today, next week, and the following week that I'm going to be talking about blessings. And I've got to think, maybe this morning, we need to have all the mothers stand. Men and the children stand up next to them. If you could touch them, to lay your hands on them. And we're going to pray, pray a blessing upon these mothers this morning. Now, if you, your kids aren't here, your husband's not here, that's okay. We've got plenty of folks here this morning that can hold their hand out to them. And I want you to pray a blessing upon them. And next week, we're going to pray a blessing upon kids in the car, the last week before uh, <coughs> uh, we're going to pray a blessing upon them as well. But this morning I'd like every woman that's a mother be, you got to stand up too. You, you got you got bonus dollars. So, uh, Miss Sue, can you stand up? Well, I, I, I'll tell you what. Don't, don't stand up. Miss Mary, you stay down. But children, Men, just reach out. If you can touch one of them, reach out and touch one of them. If you can't touch one of them, hold your hand toward it. Okay? And I want you to bow your heads. Men, I want you to pray. Children, I want you to pray with me. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, we pray a blessing upon these women. Father, we pray that your mercy and your grace would overshadow them, that the Holy Spirit would come upon them in a mighty way. That right now, in the name of Jesus, that they would be filled with your love and your goodness and your compassion. And Father, we pray that no matter what they face tomorrow, that they can face it with you beside them, with you above them, with you inside them. Father, we pray that in the name of Jesus, that these women that have, have brought forth children, that have raised children, that have raised, maybe even raising grandchildren, Lord, that you would give them wisdom, discernment. Lord, that you would give them a supernatural knowledge of yourself and how they should live in front of you. Because they are living in front of children and children's children. God, be merciful. Shine your face upon them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. If you would stand, I'm going to pray a blessing upon you. And we're going to, Miss Mary, you're going to play the closing hymn. If you'll step over toward the piano while I pray this blessing. And the reason I'm praying this blessing is this is what God prescribed to Moses for Aaron 
to pray over the children of Israel. And I pray May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face.